up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 27th. It is the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, we've got you covered there too. Go ahead and let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the indices in the green. You got the Dow up over 1%, 275 points. She's printed out 24,050. S&P's up 36 points, 2873 is the print there. NASDAQ 100 is struggling. We'll take a look at that. Only up about a half a percent right now, or 52 points. The uh, big mover to the upside today is the Russell 2000. We're going to look at that for sure. It's up 47 points, nearly 4%. Semis are up 21 bucks. Uh, New York Stock Exchange nearly. 2%. Wilshire 5,000, 1.5%. The trannies are up 2 and 3 tenths percent. And the NASDAQ composite up a little over 1%. So it's those big movers and shakers in the NDX 100 that are struggling. So we want to see where are they trading? Are they trading into support? Are they trading below support, above resistance? Just where in the heck are they trading? You got the spot volatility. It's trading lower down at 3302 it appears that it wants to continue to move lower and if that's the case then the market should continue to move sideways to higher we'll certainly review that gold's off 10 bucks silver down a penny lights we crude is off four bucks and change stay away from that marketplace or at least be trading the futures now that uso stuff out there if you want to trade lights we crude then get a futures contract and make sure that you have both sides of the trade covered you've got natural gas that has had a turnaround today uh 30 year treasury is down uh, one point and nine thirty seconds out there trading out 180 23 the leaders to the upside is uh, tesla up 60 bucks or eight percent booking holdings 40 co-star group 23 equinix 20 boston beer up 19 to the downside regenerate pharmaceuticals off of two and a half percent or 14 bucks amazon's down 11 no big deal there beyond meat down seven chesapeake injury Chesapeake Energy is off about eight bucks as well. Okay, so let's begin by taking a look at uh, just the just the markets in in general out here. That will cover Peter. That'll cover your question, I believe. We'll get to it. But let's just start by taking a look at what is going on. Meaning, where's price trading in relationship to support and resistance? And we're looking at the daily time frames out here. And so, on the daily time frames for the equity futures contracts, you've got the S and P or the E S mini that is in the uh, uh, extreme left panel and the top of that profile is 2846 that's resistance that's where sellers should be lined up if the es mini can close above this level and i would say close above it for two days in a row it'd be suggesting that prices are going to move higher move higher to where well we can use our price projection tool that will assist us now we need to see what today's close is before we draw any conclusion out here but right now 
oh shoot, that didn't exactly work as planned. Let me try to draw the A to B equals CD tool out here, Stevie's price projection tool. And so the A point is going to be that March 23rd low. The B point, I believe, is the high that transpired on March 31st, a two or three day retracement into the lows on April 2nd. Come on. There you go. So you can see that price head. Let me just expand the chart, make it a little bit easier for you. So we're focused on the ES mini or the S&P 500 right now, folks. You'll see it's one to one price projection was 2886.50. Then you then had a dark cloud cover candle that formed out here uh, inside the uh, ES on the uh, trading day of uh, what is this trading day? Give me a second here. It was uh, April the uh, 20th. Now, even though price is trading above the top of its daily profile, if you are short and you uh, you would not exit your short position until you saw a close above resistance, which is the high from April 17th. And so the number you want to be watching for is 2885, 2885. If you see a close above that, well, then chances are what price wants to do is make its way up to the 1.272 C to D expansion level. So we've got A to B, our price point there 2174 to 2635 you take that mathematical difference you multiply that times 1.272 and that level that total combination is added to where the c point is which here is 24 24 75 that's the low from april the second out there so that's what the es mini is doing Whoops. Let's go take a look at what the others are doing out here. If we take a look at the NQ, uh, she is trading right into resistance. That's the top of its profile. It has actually tested and rejected that level. The number to be watching there, 88.65. We take a look at the Dow. The Dow has tested and rejected the top of its profile, 23,967. So what have we just learned by just taking a look at these three before we go over and take a look at the Russell 2000? Because that may be a whole different animal out here. We'll take a look at that animal. We've learned that even though markets are up nicely, nothing has broken out. There is no breakout as we speak today. There is, let me restate that. There is no breakout as we look at the markets today. In looking at the ES mini or the S&P, the NASDAQ or the NDX 100 or the Dow, they're all trading below resistance. They're trading right up there. Now, the Russell 2000, a whole different animal as we speak right now. The level to be watching today is 1265.60. If price is able to close above it, well, then what it may be doing, even though this had confirmed a Gartley sell pattern, you might say, what's a Gartley sell pattern out here? That is where you've got the A to B equals CD, in this case here in a downtrending market. That is your colored in green-ish level on this white background chart. And that gets confirmed, and it was confirmed with that dark cloud cover that it formed as well. And now if price closes over the high of that dark cloud cover candle, which also happens to be the top of its profile, then that would suggest that we we would see an A to B equals CD uh, more than the one to one level. Let's go take here. We can draw that in right here on this chart as long as we're well, it's going to screw up my Gartley pattern. But you can see the one to one point two seven two expansion would be thirteen twenty four fifty five. But let me come back to the black background a little bit easier. If in fact that's what happens, then what we might see tomorrow is the potential for a three drive to a top pattern. Whew. What are all these patterns you're talking about, Stevo, out here? Well, look, three drive to a top pattern brought to us by the one and only Larry Pesavento. And you don't force these patterns. Drive one was at the high on March 26th. The second drive higher was the trading day of April 13th. And if this is going to create a three drive to a top pattern, it should form tomorrow. It should form tomorrow. Equal 11 trading sessions in between each of these drives higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's pick up where we left off, where we left off, and and I will get to the uh, questions. And if I don't get to your question, I'll certainly uh, follow up with you later on in the uh, day or early this evening. Uh, but here, take a look at the Russell 2000. So I mentioned a three drive to a top pattern. I can't go through it in its entirety as we speak right now. Uh, typically, what we see it's a it's a uh, pattern that you can't really force. If you try to force it, it doesn't really exist out here. So all I'm looking at is the first drive, as I mentioned, comes from the high of March 26. Six. The second one is April 13th, so that gives us our 11 trading session time frame, and that's, this tells us that if this pattern is going to complete, it should occur today, tomorrow, or the next day. So we'll give it one day's room on either side. Now the question is, where would price need to get to? So typically, what you've got out here is either A to B equals CD patterns, or what well, we're going to look at our expansions of swing points. Now the swing point that I'd be first looking at is the high from March 26 down to the low on April the 3rd out here, and we take a look at that expansion. I'm just showing you Fibonacci expansions of swing points out here and the uh, 1.618 is where the high came in for drive number two that was on April 13th so now let's go take a look at a second set of swing points um, give me a second here to delete this there we go. So let's get this uh, tool back in place. Now, this is going to give us a price projection target area. We're going to use the high of the swing point from April 13th. That was drive number two down to the low of the swing point on April 16th. You can see we what the Russell 2000 has done. It's It's gotten close to. Now, when I say close, I mean it's about 20 points away at its high. Well, well actually, let me see this. The high today, I might have misspoke there. The high today. 1282. Yeah, I did. And 1298, so another 16 points uh, above the high of today would get to the 1.272 expansion. Oftentimes, what we see out here is we see the expansion 
of the first set of swing points, in this case here, 1.618, is going to be the same type of expansion you would get on that third drive. So the price target for the three drive to a top pattern would be in uh, the 1298 to 13. 40 level again occurring either today tomorrow or the following day that's what i would be looking at and that then takes us to michael's question mike wrote in he said hey steve i own tza can you talk about it on the show so in essence we are by talking taking a look at and discussing the russell 2000 so tza folks would be the bear position the 300 percent bear position of the russell 2000 you had said that the Dow futures wanted to go to 23,900, which it did today, and that began to sell off. So in this case here, again, what Michael is talking about, he's talking about the top of the daily profile, where we know that sellers are at. In this case here, 23,967. And that's actually the high today has been 23,988. And yes, prices sold off a bit. But then the Russell took uh, took over, went up a lot, and is pulling everything up. Does this change your opinion that this is not a counter trend rally? Um, great question, Michael. And my answer is unequivocally no. This does not change my opinion that the market is just making a counter trend rally, and it's really not my opinion. Just I want to be really clear out here. I am not giving you my opinion of what the market is going to do and where it's headed to. What I'm sharing with you is over 130 years worth of historical data for the Dow. I'm just, and, and this is what I have shared. This is where Michael's coming from. I don't have the time to go through that right now because then I won't be able to get to the questions out here. But what I will just simply say in summary, major market bottoms. The, the bottom that we've seen so far, you can call that the coronavirus bottom. Absolutely. If that's all that transpired, if we did not shut down the, um, uh, the economy, if we were not foolish enough to shut down the economy, well, then we would be talking about something else. But that's not what we're talking about. We know that we're going to have major unemployment. We know that GDP is nowhere near bottoming. And we also know that the global flow of capital is not parked itself anywhere just yet. Why? And then you can go to, you can take a look at uh, Mr. Global, if you will, uh, Warren Buffett and his business partner out there. And what are their thoughts in the market? And why haven't they put money to use out here? If he's supposed to be the oracle, well, where the heck is he? And, you know, you're going to say, oh, but he doesn't have to report everything. B.S. Because if he's going to use some of that $180 billion, he's going to buy a company or companies out there. And there's a reason that they are waiting, isn't there? Because they know what I know from the history of the charts and what I want you to know as well, these markets are going to go blow out the lows from March. This is a counter trend rally out here. We just have to use all of our tools to try to uh, time, time it. But no, nothing here, Michael, changes my uh, changes the history, the historical patterns in the charts. So when, when I say we're going back to lows and we're going to take those things out, this has nothing to do with my opinion. I'm narrating the charts, and we have taken a look through it. Maybe if uh, Tom's got time and I can do the segment with him today, I'll go through and we'll just resummarize that there uh, versus use the time right now to, to do that. So, Michael, it looks like now there's the Gartley pattern has failed. Sometimes these patterns will fail. At this stage of the game, the Gartley sell pattern, let's pull this up here. And so the stop would have been or will be a close above the high of that dark cloud cover. Even though there's a potential for three drive top to a pattern to form, folks, it won't form until we see the bearish reversal candle confirming that price move out there. So we're at least a couple days away or at least one day away from that uh, transpiring. But again, watch this. It may not happen. You may see the Russell 2000 close back below resistance at uh, day's end. That's a possibility. That's why you want to watch that number 1265. So that's what's going on inside the markets. Why are these markets drifting higher? Well, a lot of the reason is because it's courtesy of that spot volatility index. What is it doing? Remember, folks, that 50-day exponential moving average is really important out here. It is super important. If you want to use the spot volatility index as a trading tool, then listen closely. 
It has nothing to do with what the spot volatility index is priced at. Right, it, right now, it's priced at 33.27. Instead, what you want to understand is where is it trading in relationship to the 50-day exponential moving average. Right now, the 50 days at 42.13, and price is below that. So where is it likely headed to? It's likely headed to the bottom of its Bollinger Band, 50 to 1 Bollinger Band. That reading is 28.73. That's where it's headed now, and, uh, and because typically you'll see if you go study the pattern of the spot volatility X, you put up that Bollinger Band, you see when you get above or below that 50-day exponential moving average out there, where does price drift to? Well, if it's above it, it'll drift to the upper end of that Bollinger Band, and if it's below the 50-day, it'll drift down to the bottom. And this is suggesting to us, to you and me, that until we get down to that 2873-ish level, and that number is going to change, by the way, as price moves up and down out here, that uh, we may not see that that next top until that occurs inside of the marketplace. Uh, we had Peter who asked about the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. And his question was, has it gotten to the plus 150? It most certainly has, and then some. It is right now trading out at 185.59. Now, why did Peter ask about the plus 150 level? Well, first off, in times, if you, and I don't know where this will close today, you'll want to watch this, but if it closes lower and it closes at that plus 150 area, you you look to that for a potential what I like to call plus 150 failure. That can be where a top can form inside the New York Stock Exchange. If it closes above that level, well, it's really good news for the longer term picture that we will eventually be back at these highs. It's just when is that eventually, Steve-O? Because this is just a counter trend rally, folks. It's just a counter trend rally. And all we're trying to do, you and I, is just find that next top to catch that next Nike swoosh to the bottom. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's go out to uh, Sarasota and speak with uh, Ray. Ray, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Steve. And I called last week, and I talked to you on, I think it might have been Thursday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, about NAT. Yes. And uh, we, uh, you, you gave me some guidance as far as support and resistance, and you said it needed to close above 567 on Friday, and it closed at 585. And uh, a beautiful thing. after hours, uh, on Kramer, the CEO was on... Uh, the show and the thing has gone crazy since then. Today it hit seven and a quarter. Yes. Are you still in it? So uh, I still own it. I, yeah. I sold off just my trading shares uh, Friday night and some today, but I still have my core position, and I was still kind of buying that eight dollar and sixty one cent uh, level. Yes. But I don't know if you see something else happening in the meantime. No, so you know, prices above prices above resistance, so old resistance levels in essence would become support out here. But no, the eight sixty eight, I think, is the number. Let me just switch over here to the monthly time frame. Where that's coming from, Ray, is that is the uh, breakdown level uh, that I established or that the chart is established using the uh, TD nine count pattern, and so that is yep. where on a monthly basis Nordic American tankers had uh, broken down. So that becomes its uh, price target uh, to the upside. This formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It did this back in, looks like September, uh, when it created a nice little bullish engulfing candle. Price was moving lower, doing less relative energy. And uh, there's nothing here on the monthly time frame. Uh, so that's your bigger picture. Uh, your portfolio position to suggest that price won't make a run for 868. That's where resistance is. It doesn't mean it can't get through resistance. It's just that that's where resistance is. On a weekly time frame chart, uh, we don't have this. This is as closed last week as as you mentioned above resistance. That was 567. So the next weekly resistance area. 1063 or so. So that's out of the picture. You're, you're now dealing with the monthly area of resistance. On the daily time frame, the only thing that uh, if 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 were me that I'd be paying attention. So you have a nice wide ranging bar today, which is a gap to the upside out here. But it is making this A to B equals CD pattern. And the only time to get concerned is if you were to see some type of bearish reversal candle. I don't know what candle's going to form tomorrow, but if it were, uh, then we'd have to start. It still may not change the longer term outlook. It would just at least suggest some type of pullback or retracement to support. And that's where you'd have to make the decision whether you wanted to ride that out for for that um, for that type of move. But right now, that's not what we're dealing with here. So not necessarily a whole lot of reason for us to spend a lot of time talking about a pattern that hasn't even formed. But if you were to right. see some type of bearish reversal candle, then you and I would want to take a look at a, a much closer look at it. Yeah, I just I see it uh, north of the Bollinger Bands, too. And it's, I mean, it's had such a jump in the last uh, day. And uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking short term. Pull. I've, I've closed out my trading shares, and but I've still got the core position. But I'm thinking about. You know, picking away and trying to reestablish a, a trading position on any pullback here. Yeah. So that one's that one's a slightly more complicated to try to figure out because there we'd be looking for levels of support. And so a level of support and we'd really want to see the pattern that had unfolded. But right now, that level of support would be around five dollars. Five, five, thirteen, mm. somewhere in that range. You know, you're at six eighty eight. If price starts pulling back to that level, you you might be in your mind thinking, what am I going to do with the longer term position? Right. You, you know, from right. a percentage standpoint, that'd be you know, you're talking about uh, two, about a, almost a two dollar swing, you know, on a seven dollar stock. That's that's thirty percent. I know. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I can count. give you that number. I'll give you that number, and I, I just did. But I, I'm thinking if you start to see that, the sphincter muscle is going to start asking, eh, maybe I should dump all the shares or you know take the profits on everything. But that would be we're we're not there yet, and so let's not uh, spend uh, really any time. Maybe new profiles will form, or something else might happen that would give us some different uh, data to use. 
Yep. Okay. Well, for now, I think I'll just uh, hold tight on my core position and just keep a close eye on it. Yeah, I would. I don't see. There's nothing. There's no signals to suggest otherwise. So that's what that's what I would recommend. Great. Thank you very much. You I appreciate your help. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. We had an individual in the den wanted to take a look at uh, Vertex Pharmaceuticals, VRTX. Uh, what I don't know is uh, what the uh, what what the information is that you're looking. So let me just give you the general go round on Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Right now, today, it has tested and rejected resistance. That's where sellers are hanging out, and we know it's resistance. It's two seventy three eighty. You and I can be specific. We have a competitive advantage. When you and I are trading and we're trying to understand what the chart uh, for a time frame is communicating to you and I, when we utilize these tools, it gives us a competitive advantage. Now, long ago, when I owned a number of different businesses, I always shared with people uh, this, which I always believe that a competitive advantage was a good thing to have. That's why you really do want to understand where support and resistance is like Ray and I were talking about here. This is objective. This is not Stevie coming up with these numbers out here, and these tools work very good. So in the case of Vertex Pharmaceuticals, it's just up, just up against resistance. That doesn't mean this is a sell. It means in the uh, football game, the tug-of-war game, whatever game it is uh, that you want to play, the basketball game, uh, you know, whatever it is, we know where buyers and sellers are. That's the, com that's, the, that's the competitive advantage that you and I have. We're our sellers on a daily basis. They're at 256.69 between there and 263.53 because the center where both buyers and sellers reside is closer to the bottom of the box. So we would say if this is going to pull back Vertex Pharmaceuticals and you were looking to get into it, well, the areas that you would be looking at would be between 256 and 263 out there. Now, what we want to determine, though, Prices above the weekly, price above the monthly uh, profile. Is, is there any kind of topping signal? If there's a topping pattern, well, then that could change the picture. But when you and I take a look at Vertex Pharmaceuticals right now, I don't have a topping signal for its daily time frame. And if you're going to ask where's support, well, now we can see Stevie's green line, and that's 267.30. So price would need to close below that because that's a support level, 267.30. If it did, then that would open up the door for that 256 to 263 area. See how good I am? with math i mean my goodness out there but no these levels these levels of support or stevie's green line are very helpful to you and i to understand what the market is communicating to to us we go look at the weekly time frame chart we do not have any kind of bearish topping signal inside of vertex pharmaceuticals and when i take a look at the monthly time frame all we have is uh, well this is going to be bar number nine of a TD setup nine count and price is moving higher. There's the signal of the roads momentum indicator pattern. So this is if you are in Vertex Pharmaceuticals, um, watch that daily time frame as we finish this month out here. So we're talking about in May, the old sell in May, perhaps um, uh, because uh, because of this forming a longer term. TD nine count pattern. So something to pay attention to. Um, Let's go to uh, uh, let's go to uh, Michelle in the den. She wants to take a look at uh, uh, AUY. So that is Yamana Gold. So let's go ahead and punch this up. See what this is doing. Let's just stick with uh, this uh, set of charts out here. And uh, of course, we're just waiting for this to uh, to uh, finish calculating. Okay. So we take a look at. So in the case of Yamana Gold, it generated. I've got to go to my other charts out here. Give me a moment. I was trying to avoid that. This generated a sell signal um, a couple of days ago when it created this little shooting star. So that was on April 23rd. So if you're a long Yamana Gold, AUY, you just needs to be careful here. We don't have a level of support that is broken. I'll get back to that. But here's what we know about Yamana Gold on a daily basis. It tested a swing point. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look at Yamana Gold before I uh, forgot to pay attention to the uh, to the commercial clock out there. But what it did on the trading day of April 23rd, uh, it tested and rejected the prior swing point high. Now, that prior swing point was 224, volume there about 42 million shares, and was tested with uh, less than well, 28 million shares, much lighter volume. Test and rejection out there, uh, that could be the sign of a top. Uh, so you want to be careful. Even if you didn't know the A to B equals CD pattern, we don't even have to look at that because we have tested a swing point. However, we go ahead and open up this uh, daily time frame chart again. Um, what price hasn't done, it has not broken through a key level of support. Now, the only key level of support or the key level of support that one should be paying attention to is Stevie's green line. And that is priced at 436. You should anticipate that over the coming sessions, I don't know how many sessions, you should see price and that green line catch up to each other. And that's really what you'd be looking for. A test and rejection, meaning price testing it, but then bouncing above it, uh, bounce, uh, bouncing above that level or closing above above the green line, that would be a bullish test. And say, okay, I'm gonna go at least make another run for those highs, maybe take them out. A close below Stevie's green line, currently priced at 436, would say I'm gonna pull back to another level of support. That next level of support is the top of that daily profile out there. And that's at that price point of 367. So uh, just be careful. Now we also have the weekly test. Uh, that was the week uh, that began February 24th. There's 162 million shares and it was tested and rejected with 119 million shares. So be careful inside of Yamana gold out there. Uh, Tim wrote in and Tim wanted to take a look at Marathon Oil. MRO is the ticker symbol out here. So let's go look at that for uh, Tim. And uh, Tim is your long marathon oil and Ford looking for support and resistance. So that's really pretty easy. I would just be focused on, uh, for, so from a support standpoint for Marathon Oil, you're going to use the top of its daily profile. And that's $4.43 out there. That's support. 
For resistance, we would just simply flip over to the weekly time frame chart, and that's five dollars and seventy-one cents. We'll go ahead and take over, I'll pull over Stevie's other charts out here, see if there's anything else that we can help Tim with. Um, no, because my red line is down to three sixty-four, so you're going to want to watch the four forty-three area. If price gets below that, well, then that's telling you it's likely going to visit Stevie's red line, three sixty-four. Uh, the weekly chart says be careful because all that took place out here. So Tim, be very, very very, very careful out here because all that transpired last week was a move up to Stevie's red line on a weekly basis. That's where any counter trend rally would fail. In fact, that's a really important point out here because we were talking about the indices earlier in the opening two segments, two segments of the show. And when Michael asked me that great question, do, you know, have I changed? Have I changed my opinion about this just being a counter trend rally? Um, what I really should have also done was pulled over, for example, on the Russell 2000 out here. All that it's doing, because it hadn't done, is on its weekly chart getting up to Stevie's red line. And that's basically where we're priced at right now, the 1277 area. And that's where a counter trend rally also would end. Not that it can't spike through it, you know, on a daily basis, but right now, what Russell 2000 did was it was the only uh, one of the four that hadn't gotten up to its weekly oscillator unchanged line level. Here, for example, take a look at the Dow. Here's the Dow. Would there be any reason for you or I to think that uh, there's, this is nothing more than a counter trend rally in the Dow? The answer is Dow equity future contract, by the way, is what we're looking at. And it's below Stevie's red line. It's been a test and rejection of that level out there. Let's go take a look at the ES or the NQ. That's the next uh, chart that I pull over. Now, this is the this is the the NQ is so important because look on a weekly basis, we can absolutely make a, a bullish assessment here. We have to. Otherwise, I would be giving you my opinion versus the actual narration of what the chart is telling us. But right now, on a weekly basis, price is above Stevie's green line, 85.66. When the line is green and you're trading above it, that's bullish. It tells you it wants to move to the next higher level, the next higher level if you can find resistance out there. Um, and so in the case of the uh, NQ, I actually don't have any other resistance. I'd have to go back to some weekly profiles. Sort of, but, but the NQ, you can see, is trading above Stevie's green line. So we'd be looking for some type of topping signal there inside the daily time frame for the NQ. And we take a look at the ES Mini price is basically trading right at Stevie's weekly red line. You can see it's been trading at this area. So all four of the futures contracts have made it back up to where they really needed to in order to create a solid... Uh, counter trend rally move up there for the weekly time frame. So um, we've got a caller from Denver, and uh, we don't know who it is. So, uh, caller, could you introduce yourself to us? Hello? No, no, we don't have a caller. Um, okay, I guess we don't have a caller. So uh, let me just go to the, or uh, we just, uh, okay, great, got it, okay. Okay, um, let me go to, uh, uh, the, somebody would call in and asked uh, for us to take a, a look at something, and, and I w I'll do that here, I'll try to do that. Let me get to this uh, next question that came in, this one coming in from uh, Sylvia, and Sylvia wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol S-A-V-A. So let's go take a look at it. Let's get this thing fired. Well, we tried to do that. Come on. Come on, system. S-A-B-A. -A. Let's go see what this is. This is uh, Cassaba Sciences out here. S-A-V-A. -A. Let me get on my other system as well. And so Sylvia is asking the question that is broken out with confirmations with your metrics. Uh, anything else that you could uh, suggest to enter a position now? Okay. So Sylvia is interested in, uh, in entering a ticker symbol S-A-V-A. That is Cassava Sciences. It's trading above both the daily, well, the daily and weekly profiles out there. And Sylvia, at this stage here, you've, it's too close to potential resistance. Just take a look at profiles out here. So the reward risk trade would not be in there. And that is that uh, this month, the month of uh, April, this formed a brand new profile. And it's a bearish structured profile. And what I mean by that, let me just expand the chart. Let me turn off price. I know some of you might say, turn off price. How can you interpret a chart if you're going to turn off price? Well, that's because you and I use a set of tools that helps understand where buyers and sellers are and so now you can see in the lower right hand corner you'll see a red line at 797 you'll see a blue line cyan line at 599 and you'll see a green line down at 202 
The red line is sellers, the cyan color, sellers and buyers. It's closer to the top than it is to the bottom, a bearish structured profile. So you're now inside the range of uh, Saba of where sell sellers are between 599 and 797 out there. And so I could never suggest that now would be any type of a time period for you to enter this. If you're going to try to buy this on a breakout, well, then price must close above 797 on a, a monthly basis out there. But let's pull over Stevie's other charts. Let's go look at the daily time frame out here, see if there's any kind of signals that we can give to Sylvia. Uh, to suggest that maybe this could form a top soon. Well, just so happens that you are going to be in wave number seven. That is letter G on my screen right now. And so if something was entering wave number seven or letter G, there's no way we would tell you to ent uh, uh, get into a long position here. Its resistance on the daily time frame is 835. Uh, if this did pull back, uh, Sylvia, uh, after wave number seven over the coming days and price were to test Stevie's green line at around 596 or so, well, then you might have a trade set up, which is what you were asking for. So you'd have to watch Stevie's red line. You'd have to watch the volume there. That could give you a trade set up where you'd be looking to exit around $8.35. But don't forget, you've got sellers on that monthly chart of that 797 area. That is Casaba Sciences. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. 
back, uh, folks. So uh, our caller from Denver wanted to take a look at Stillwater Mines, SBSW out here. And as we take a look at it, if I just simply go back to uh, my uh, – where prices – Prices targeting eight dollars and eighty-eight cents. I don't see a topping uh, pattern in play at this stage of the uh, game. Uh, prices above resistance, the top of its bearish structure daily profile. It's trading around seven seventy-seven, and this wants to go ahead to its resistance level at eight eighty-eight out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, we had a request to take a look at uh, from George in Tampa. Want to take a look at uh, CY CYDY out here so let's go see if we can go figure out cydy and where this is headed this is uh cytoden inc cytoden inc is trading uh, this has had a one heck of a move was trading at about 35 cents about um four or five months ago and it's at three dollars and 58 cents it's above resistance daily weekly and monthly when we take a look at its um uh, profile. So that's not going to be good enough for us to get a feel for where this might be running into resistance. So let me get my other chart pulled over here. We can see that uh, price today, uh, well, really on Friday, it's beginning to move up and doing so with less relative energy out there. Uh, that's only a problem if we see some type of bearish reversal candle. So be on the lookout for that, just like, um, in essence, Ray is inside of Nordic American tankers out here. We can see that uh, this is also stretch on the weekly basis. Again, no problem unless there's a bearish reversal candle that forms inside this uh, ticker symbol, CYDY. And on the uh, monthly time frame, boy, I don't have any kind of resistance uh, for you. So everything looks uh, mean and green. Uh, watch the daily time frame, and if you see some type of bearish reversal candle, that's going to be your signal that is getting ready to uh, pull back. Uh, so, folks, thanks so much for the uh, calls. Thanks so much for everybody that wrote in, everybody inside the Tiger's Den. If I didn't get to your question uh, and you sent it in by email, I'll respond back to you. In the meantime, please stay tuned. you got two more great hours. You've got your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. Tom O'Brien to take us home from 3 to 4, and I look forward to seeing you on Terrific Tuesday. Used to be called Taco Tuesday because we could go out to the uh, Mexican restaurants and have a margarita and a taco. No longer. We have to do that at home. See you later, folks. Have a great day.